Welcome into the shop, everybody. It is great to have you all here. Now, we have a bit of a different video lined up, and I think this is going to be super interesting. I had this idea cranking in my head for a long time now, and today I'm going to give it a shot. I want to start off by saying thanks to Molecule for sponsoring this video. I'm going to tell you more about them in a little bit. Now, I want to explain a little bit about steam bending because this is how this whole idea popped in my head. I worked for a chair maker in Kentucky called, his name was Brian Boggs. He made amazing chairs, still does, very talented craftsman. And I learned a lot about steam bending in those days. So there's three things you need to steam bend. You need air dried uh, straight grain wood, preferably split. You need steam and you need a good jig to uh, bend the lumber in, the wood in. So let me explain the jig real quick. This is a ladder back chair that I built. So these back legs are, cur the curve in those are actually steam bent. They're done in this form. So the key to a bending jig form is compression. You have a strap that goes on the jig and you have a bolt at the end of this and it actually bolts the workpiece that you're gonna bend into the jig and compresses it, holds it in place. And then this is your handle and you'll bend the piece around down like this. So the steel strap is just helping support the wood fibers. What's happening is the inside curve is compressing and those fibers are crushing, which is okay. The outside curve, they're stretching and they wanna break, they wanna tear apart. So the, the, the strap helps support those outside fibers and keeps it from having failure. It works really well. My thought was if I can compress the wood with the strap, why can't I stretch it and go the opposite way? Seems like it would work. So that's what we're gonna try to do today. We're gonna use steam and I've uh, rigged up a whole system and we're gonna try to stretch some boards. Now I'm gonna tell you this is more of an experimental thing, but I think it will work um, and I'm anxious to see how much we can actually add to a board. So now that you've listened to that whole spiel, hopefully you're tracking with me on the steam bending. Let me tell you a little bit about how I'm gonna harness uh, power to actually stretch a board. So I recently acquired a trailer from my buddy Matt Carricker and it has a winch on it and that's really what kind of connected the dots, said, well, I have this trailer, I can use the winch as my pulling force. So I've set up a jig to hold basically one by three and eight square blanks um, on the trailer and basically try to stretch them. I've got different types, we've got walnut, we got red oak. Some of this is air dried, some of it's kiln dried. So I've got the whole system already set up outside. I've already built the jig. It's basically just made out of plywood, screwed it up, built up a platform, left a little bit of space for the blank to slide into. Cap the top, uh, I put two 3 8 bolts down through the, the blank. That'll help keep it in the, the jig. And then we have eye bolts off the back of the jig that will connect um, with a chain and, and help support the pull of the counter the pull of the uh, winch. So as the, as the winch is pulling, it's gonna keep that whole jig from just pulling with the winch. I think it's gonna work, we'll see. Let me take you out there real quick, show you the setup, and then we're gonna do a quick test run on a dry piece without any steam, just to make sure everything holds up. And uh, then we're going to throw them in the steamer and see if we can stretch some lumber. Okay, so here it is. It is a bit ambitious, a little bit of overkill, um, but basically we have, this is the counter to the pull of the winch. It hooks into the two eye bolts. This is the jig, the cradle that will hold the workpiece. And I've ratchet strapped it down for only purposes just to keep it, um, kind of keep it still and in the place. And then obviously we'll pull the winch there to an eye bolt that we put in the blank and pull the blank. The blank slides in just like slow. Flush it up to the back. Drop in the bolt. Now this is gonna keep that blank from moving that way. And then as the whole jig gets pulled by the winch, this whole rig back here will keep the whole jig from moving. Essentially all the force should be going right through here. We'll see. So the only thing that really concerns me about this setup are the eye bolts. They're probably gonna be the failure point. Um, this winch is an 8,000 pound winch and I'm pretty sure if it wants to, it can snaggle tooth and eye bolt pretty quick. If that happens, we'll figure something else out. But what I wanna do is do a dry run with just this piece, see how it all works, and then we'll start throwing things in the steamer. Wow. This is such overkill. Yeah, this is a bad idea. All right, let's do this.
Um, so we got tension on this, quite a bit of tension. This is starting to kind of bend a little. Um, and obviously this hasn't stretched or moved at all. It's exactly, it was hanging over just a little bit, still doing the same thing, but everything is locked in. It's found its home. So what I can do now is loosen this. We're gonna throw these in the steamer and I don't think it's gonna take a lot of pulling force to start stretching them, but we're gonna find out. But I know at this point, if we kept going, this would probably just snaggle tooth. Okay, steaming setup. Uh, this is my old steamer box. Built this in about 2006. It's not in great shape, but it'll work. Turkey fryer, boiler, a pot with water, radiator hose to the steam box, propane courtesy of the Argosy. Got a lot of propane to use up. So basically the rule of thumb with steaming is you steam for an hour for every inch of thickness. So our parts are about an inch and three eighths. So we'll steam for about an hour and a half. All right, let's get this thing loaded. Looking good. Hot. You know how smell brings back certain memory in life. The smell of a steamer just gives me flashbacks of my apprenticeship actually really like it. Quite a nice odor. All right, we're gonna let these bad boys sit for about an hour and a half. Okay, so with those parts in the steam box, it's a great opportunity to tell you about today's sponsor, Molecule. Now, I've worked with them in the past. They are a great sponsor of the channel and they make a very, very high quality air purifier. So we all know we're spending more time indoors to the lockdown and clean air couldn't be more important. That's another reason why I've partnered up with Molecule to help raise awareness the effects of poor air quality. Molecules technology is personally effective and science tested, but it's also tested by real life people. So my wife and I have had a molecule in our bedroom now for about three months, and I can tell you there is a distinct odor to any house, I think, uh, when you leave it and come back. Our house was on pier and beam and it was built in the 60s, and anytime I leave it for three or four days and come back, there's just, there's just a, a distinct smell to the house. About a month ago, we went on vacation for a week, came back, and obviously I could smell that odor when I got home, walked into our bedroom. You could not smell it, I'm serious. The molecule had been running that whole week and had taken care of the odor. So that proved to me without a doubt that the system works, that it kills odors, and that I have cleaner air in my bedroom than I do in the other parts of my house. Now, one of my favorite things about the molecule is not only does it have awesome technology inside of it, but it's also beautifully designed. It looks really nice in our house. It has quality materials, it functions well, it has a cool touch screen uh, on top that my kids like to play with. But overall, I just love the way it looks in my house. It fits in nicely. It has a nice modern look to it. It's a really well thought out design, which I can appreciate being someone who builds furniture. Now the technology inside the molecule is the Pico filter, which is photoelectrochemical oxidation. It basically destroys allergens and mold on a mo molecular level. The Pico filter will take out things like mold, pollen, dust mites, pet dander. I'm especially thankful for the mold, uh, not the mold, but the pollen, because I know that on a molecular level, it is actually destroying the pollen. It's not just catching it in a filter. Molecule makes a wide range of filters. They have a mini, which I'm actually kind of pretty excited about because I want to put it in our RVC once that's done. So we have nice clean air in there as well. If you have a dental office, a medical office, a business, Molecule has different packages that you can get that fit your space and your requirements, anything from large to small. I just wanna say a big thanks to my friends at Molecule. Thank you for sponsoring the channel. Thank you for providing such a great product that I've been very happy with over the last three months. Now, the great thing is Molecule is offering 10% off to my viewers. Just go to molecule.com and at checkout, use the code Andy Rawls. Link is in the description. There's no reason why you shouldn't try this thing out. I promise you it works. I've had great success with it and I am very thankful for Molecule for supporting the channel. Now let's go check on these boards. I think they're pretty close to being ready and I'm excited to see if we can actually stretch some boards. Okay, I'm gonna start with the walnut. That one's kiln dried. Really hope this works. It's the one we originally had in to test the system. Now we steamed it. Should be able to stretch it out if everything goes to plan. Let's give it a shot. Whoa. whoa. No, no bueno. All right, exactly what I thought was gonna happen happened. I just snackle toothed it, just bent it right out. It did stretch it, I will say. 
it went back to its original length, but it did stretch it out. We maybe got an eighth of an inch. Uh, that's a bummer. I gotta figure out a better way to pull on these. Okay, new system. Plate moved forward. The bolts still line up. It overhangs now. I'm gonna put a half inch bolt through the end of that, put a strap onto that. That should be solid. Now we just gotta hope that these can hold up. I forgot to measure the dumb board. Freaking failing. 45 and a quarter, roughly. Well, stretched it. Three sixteenths. Dang it. Failed. No bueno. Okay, I am 100% overthinking this. I'm taking all of this off and not using any of it. I'm just gonna bolt straight to the, straight to the board and pull it. Why do I need all this? It's causing more problems. Then I need just put a bolt through one end of the board, strap it, bolt to the other end, strap it. I think that's way better than this. I don't know what, a lot of times I like to overthink things and that's exactly what this is. Burn pile. Yikes. You okay, GoPro? All right. 45 and a quarter. Please be longer. 45 and a quarter. This is completely wasting my time. Oh, maybe, maybe we got a 16th. Jeez. What am I doing right now? I think that's permanent. This is 45 and a quarter. That's, it's gotta be stretching. I don't wanna go too much here. Okay, very carefully, very carefully. Okay, eighth of an inch. At least I can say I've stretched a board. Only an eighth of an, eighth of an inch though. Okay, that's as far as I'm taking, it scares me. Yeah, it's too much. Yep, it went back. Stretched it an eighth. I mean, it's 
That didn't fail. I mean, I think I kind of failed. I would say I pretty much failed at this, but the last piece is poplar. Maybe we'll have some success with that. The lightweight wood, it's not very strong, so maybe it'll stretch a little bit easier. I don't know, it's been steaming for a while while we've been doing this, so same process. I'm gonna go grab it, see if it works. Yeah, bud. Time to get back to building furniture. Burn pile. Okay, appreciate you guys tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. Shoot me a comment, let me know what I did wrong, what I could do better. Just tell me I wasted your time if you want to. Whatever you want to tell me, just tell me in the comments. I'm gonna get back to actually doing something productive uh, like Argosy and furniture. I, you know, sometimes you just have to try it. Had to try it, did not work. We did get an eighth. Did get an eighth on the walnut. I don't really have it on camera, but I promise you, it stretched an eighth. It just went back after we took it off the, the tension. This video may have been a failure at stretching a board, but at least you get 10% off a molecule. So go down the link, hit the description, go get it. I promise you won't be disappointed. Appreciate you guys tuning in. See you next time.